Making the headlines tonight. U.S. President Joe Biden sends letter to Prime Minister Hun Sen, stating that the U.S. administration looks forward to working with Cambodia as 2022 ASEAN chair. U.S. troops arrive in Poland in order to reinforce its NATO allies in Eastern Europe amid a Russian military buildup on Ukraine's border. Chinese tennis player Peng Shui denies ever accusing anyone of sexual assault. And Europe's largest light festival marks an end to pandemic darkness in Copenhagen. This is the Daily Roundup on EAC News Channel. A very good evening to you. I'm Darshana Gochin. In a letter sent by the U.S. President Joe Biden to Prime Minister Hun Sen, it was stated that the U.S. administration looks forward to working with Cambodia as 2022 ASEAN chair. The letter further says under Cambodia's chairmanship, the United States hopes to both grow its relationship with ASEAN and continue to pursue its common goals in the region. EAC News reporter Robin Lim has more. The United States has made sure that it is committed to the Asian centrality and remains steadfast in its support for an Asian central regional architecture at the heart of the Indo-Pacific. It says it is expected that it is already received from Indonesia in its capacity as a country coordinator from the United States in Asia. The enclosed correspondence conveying the intent to invite Asian leaders to join the President of the United States in Washington for a special summit in the coming months. President Joe Biden has reached out to Prime Minister Hun Sen personally, as well as to underscore that he has looked forward to welcoming the Cambodia's premier to Washington at the earliest opportunity. While Prime Minister Hun Sen has thanked the U.S. president also in a letter expressing the U.S. president's intention to invite him and Asian leaders to attend the special Asian-U.S. summit in the coming months, and his desire to further strengthen the relation between Asian and the U.S. under Cambodia's chairmanship of Asian. As the Asian chair for 2022, Prime Minister Hun Sen wishes to reiterate Cambodia's strong commitment and full support for the U.S. to convene the Asian-U.S. Special Summit in Washington, D.C. The Prime Minister has said that he is confident that the summit will provide a good opportunity for Cambodia to exchange views on how to further advance the Asian-U.S. cooperation. Prime Minister Hun Sen has also said that he is looking forward to working closely with President Joe Biden and to see him in person in Washington, D.C. And Cambodia's premier has renewed his assurance of his highest consideration on the invitation of the U.S. President, Robin Lim, EAC News. Prime Minister Hun Sen has announced that he will meet with all students who passed the recent 2020 to 2021 high school baccalaureate exams with A grades on 20th February 2022 in Phnom Penh. He made this statement while speaking at the inauguration ceremony of National Road No. 7 in Kati province on Monday morning. EAC News reporter De Canin has more details. Speaking at the inauguration ceremony, Prime Minister stated that all provincial governors should get ready to send all students who received A grades in their high school exams, as well as their parents, to Phnom Penh to prepare for the meeting between him and the students. He also expressed his surprise that more than 1,700 students were able to receive the highest A grade in the 2020-2021 school year, despite being conducted largely online due to the COVID-19 pandemic. He praised those students for achieving such great success. On the 14th of January, the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports announced the results of the high school baccalaureate exams for the 2020-2021 academic year, with 65.65% of the candidates passing the exam, and a total of 1,753 candidates received an A grade. This was a significant increase in the number of students who achieved top grades compared to 2019. On the 15th of January, Prime Minister Hun Sen first announced that he intends to hold a meeting with all A-grade students, with the support of the Minister of Education arranging the location and time. He wrote saying that he would like to commend all students who received A-grades and that he will meet with them to congratulate them on their hard work and achievements. Nekanin, EAC News. While speaking at the inauguration ceremony of National Road No. 7 in Krati Province on Monday morning, Prime Minister Hun Sen stated that Mondulkiri Province has produced around 1,751 kilograms of gold in the past six months. EAC News reporter Anthony Ellis has more. 
Prime Minister Hun Sen cited a report on the production of Cambodian gold affirming that the country produces 80 to 100 kilos of gold per week and production amount is on the rise. He stated he has set a goal for Cambodia's economic development in the direction of agro-industry and mineral resources. He said while not all research into these sectors has been completed yet, he has affirmed that there is a great potential as Cambodia has natural resources of bauxite and coal and well other places in the country can produce gold. He added when the gold extracted in Cambodia, it is processed into gold bullion and then sent to Australia for refining. In 2022, four more golding mines companies will officially start their gold mining business in Cambodia. Three of these gold mining companies are Chinese investment-led businesses, located in Previrie, Krache, Mondamukiri provinces, and a fourth run by an Indian company located in Ratanakiri. Anthony Ellis, EAC News. A new 93-kilometre-long stretch of National Road No. 7 in Krati province, constructed from a $39 million grant from China, was officially inaugurated on Monday morning. The ceremony was presided over by Prime Minister Hun Sen and other senior ministers. This road is part of the Asian Highway 11 network and will help to promote the development of the Cambodia-Lao-Vietnam Development Triangle area. EAC News reporter Sai Por Kong has more details. The new 93.56 km straight of National Road No. 7 runs from the Tiger Roundabout to Ochralong, Okrien Commune, Sambo District in Krati Province. Speaking at the inauguration ceremony, the Minister of Public Works and Transport Sun Chantol stated that this road is part of ASEAN Highway 11 and the Greater Mekong Subregion GMS Corridor, which connects Kunming in southern China through Vientiane, Laos, Phnom Penh, and toward the port of Sianukville, Cambodia. He added that the National Road No. 7 will play an important role in promoting the development of the cambodia laos vietnam Development Triangle area, which will help to turn develop more remote areas of the three countries, particularly the provinces of Thabong Khmum, Krati, Stang Trai, Rotanakiri, and Mandokiri in Cambodia. The senior minister stated that the new straight of road extends from the roundabout in the village of Kapo Orusai Commune to Ramit Village, Okrian Commune in Sambo District. He also added that the road surface pavement has been upgraded with asphalt concrete AC from its previous Dubol Bituminous Surface Treatment Pavement DBST, based on conclusion from an updated study on the increase in traffic combined with national economic growth, trade, investment, and tourism in Cambodia. Senior Minister Sun Chantal said that the project to improve the quality of National Road No. 7 was conducted under a grain of the Chinese government, began construction in November 2016, and was completed in December 2018 by the Shanghai Construction Corporation SCG and under the technical supervision of Guangzhou Wanan Technical Consulting. He continued to say that this new achievement is an invaluable and precious bond that arises from the strong friendship and cooperation between the Royal Government of Cambodia and the Government of the People Republic of China to the people of Krati province and the people across the country for general and long-term use. He affirmed that National Road No. 7 will connect Phnom Penh through major provinces such as Kampung Cham, Thabong Khmum, Krati, and Stung Trai toward the fourth economic pole of Cambodia in the northeast of the country, and which will serve the direct traffic of economic, trade, and tourism exchange activity in the countries. Sri Pokong, EAC News. The Phnom Penh Municipal Administration has ordered all Naga World protesters to stop protesting and undergo quarantine for seven days after finding a cluster of positive COVID-19 cases among protesters. The administration has added that those who continue to protest will be sent to a quarantine center in Phnom Penh, Prek Pano District, by authorities and face legal penalties. EAC News reporter Robin Lim has the story. This move comes after a team of doctors from the Phnom Penh Municipal Health Department found a cluster of positive COVID-19 cases among Naga World protesters, particularly of the Omicron variant. Doctors found up to 29 new positive cases on Sunday. The Phnom Penh Municipal Administration has requested that the protesters, who have not yet provided their test samples, to stop the protest, go and get tested and undergo isolation in quarantine for seven days. 
A statement issued on Sunday by the Phnom Penh Municipal Administration added that, in case of non-compliance with the health rules, the competent authorities will take administrative measures to send stubborn individuals to a quarantine center in Phnom Penh, b r e k p n o v District, under Subdecree No. 27, dated 18 February 2021, on measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19, will be fined from 1 million to 5 million r e a l s and punished according to the criminal law in force. Authorities will start disinfecting the means of transportation and public places where the protesters were situated, such as the bus that the protesters used to travel to get tested, other vehicles, restaurants, and bathrooms. The Capital Administration has requested the Department of Labor to cooperate with the 14 district administrations to monitor and approach the residences of the protesting former Niagara World employee in order to instruct them to get tested for COVID-19 on time. In addition to the Phnom Penh Municipal Police, the Phnom Penh Gandamarie Command, the Jam Gamon District Administration, the Duan Penh District Administration, and the Phnom Penh Municipal Health Department will take administrative and legal measures against those who continue to gather, refuse to comply with health measures, and impede the work of the physicians and authorities in accordance with the law on measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and other serious and dangerous infectious diseases and other relevant laws in force. A positive COVID-19 case of the Omicron variant was first detected last week in a pregnant woman who was previously part of the Naga World protest. As of Sunday 6, February, authorities have identified 34 positive COVID-19 cases among protesters. Robin Lim, EAC News. Cambodia has vaulted to second place in the latest edition of Nikkei's COVID-19 Recovery Index after the Southeast Asian nation has declared it would start to live with the coronavirus about three months ago. Taiwan was ranked in first place, published by the Tokyo-based English-language news magazine Nikkei Asia on Friday. EAC News reporter De Kanin has more details. The Nikkei COVID-19 Recovery Index evaluates vaccine rollouts and efficiency of COVID-19 management in more than 120 regions and countries up to the end of January. Taiwan has secured the top spot with a score of 82 out of 100. The Philippines, on the other hand, has slipped 45 places to 104th after the Omicron variant drove an explosion in cases, though its outlook may be brightening as infections drop. The index assesses countries and regions on infection management, vaccine rollouts, and social mobility. The higher the ranking, the closer a place is to recovery, characterized by fewer infections, bigger inoculation rates, and less strict social distancing measures. The latest ranking reflects conditions up to the end of January 2022. Cambodia has been steadily climbing the ladder in recent months. It recorded fewer than 900 cases in January and saw no COVID deaths for a month. The country's early success in managing the coronavirus with under 400 reported cases and no deaths one year into the pandemic was upended by a major outbreak that started in February 2021. That has continued for much of last year and has strained the underfunded public health system, triggering widespread lockdowns. Despite of this, Cambodia has pressed ahead with its vaccination drive, relying mainly on Chinese-made vaccines. By November, it has surpassed its vaccination target, prompting Prime Minister Hun Sen to order a full reopening. Later that month, Cambodia became one of the first members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations to exempt fully vaccinated travelers from quarantine. According to a World Health Organization report dated January 24, 98.5% of Cambodia's adults and 96.8% of children aged 5 or above had received two doses, while nearly half the adult population had given a booster shot as well. The same report has said about 85% of the 43.5 million vaccine doses the country had received were purchased from or donated by China. While the Philippines has only managed to fully vaccinate 53% of its total population, with less than 10% receiving boosters by the end of January, according to the statistics website Our World in Data. The highly transmissible Omicron variant hit the Philippines hard, at least in terms of case numbers. The daily count surged to a record 39,004 on mid-January, from as low as 168 before Christmas 2021. 
Omicron has overwhelmed testing centers with nearly half of samples coming in positive at one point. Based on their higher positions in the index, other Asia-Pacific countries making similar reopening moves look more ready to do so. Thailand, which has recently restarted its quarantine-free entry program, has jumped 11 spots to the 19th in the latest ranking. Vietnam, which is still struggling with high levels of infections, is beginning to make a comeback, rising 28 places to 90th. It too is moving toward coexisting with the virus, having eased re-entry rules for overseas nationals and foreign workers late last month. Taiwan has climbed to top position with a total score of 82 out of 100. It lost six points in flight activity with international arrivals still down 80% in January compared to pre-pandemic levels. The island keeps its borders largely closed. China has edged up one place to fourth as it prepared for the Beijing Winter Olympics, which has started on Friday. The emergence of local outbreaks spanning several provinces and the arrival of Omicron have made it harder for the country to maintain its strict zero-COVID approach. Japan has tumbled 55 places to 67th. Daily infections exceeded 100,000 for the first time on Thursday, while the rollout of booster shots has been slow. Tokyo alone had more than 20,000 cases for two consecutive days, but the metropolitan government is not requesting a full state of emergency at this stage. Having revised the criteria considering the apparently lower risk of severe disease caused by Omicron. Dekanin, EAC News. Six suspects have been arrested for the murder of five family members on 1st of February in Mondulkiri province. One surviving member of the family, another child, is reported to be currently recovering in Phnom Penh Hospital. EAC News reporter Anthony Ellis has the story. Six suspects have been arrested for a brutal murder of five people, including three children and two adults, and attempted murder of one child, which occurred on the 1st of February in Maipai village, Pitera district in Montemacuri province. The arrest was made by a specialised joint task force Bravo 22 of Montemacuri province police on the 5th of February, in a cooperation with the specialised force of the criminal police department and the technical and scientific police department. According to the director of operations for the child protection unit, James McCabe, the murder case was investigated by multiple agencies, including the Ministry of Interior scientific department, the Office of Major Crime, the Monomacuri Police Command and the Child Protection Unit Homicide and Forensic Teams. He added that this had been a very brutal and heinous crime that was in a remote location, making the investigation extremely difficult. The six arrested suspects live in Lao Khao Village and Sen Monoram City with ages ranging from 14 to 54. The suspects confessed that the reason for the killings, the five victims and injured one was out of resentment and accusations that the family were witches and engaged in black magic. With the six suspects in holding, a case is currently being built to send to the provincial court and move forward with the arrest procedures. Anthony Ellis, EAC News. Cambodia has reported 108 new COVID-19 cases, including five which are imported. There have been 90 patient recoveries and once again, no new deaths. The kingdom recorded 103 new community and five new imported cases of the new variant. This means that Cambodia has now recorded 1,440 cases of Omicron, 549 imported and 891 community cases. The kingdom's COVID-19 case tally has now climbed to 121,881. The death toll stands at 3,015. The number of patients treated successfully since the pandemic reached Cambodia is 118,212. And the tally for imported cases has climbed to 20,406. Healthcare workers are now treating a total of 731 patients. And now for a look at news making international headlines this Monday, 7th February. 
A five-year-old boy trapped in a well has died according to the state media in Morocco on Saturday, February 5. Rescuers came too late. The child was carried out by rescue teams near the town of Chefchaouen, Morocco. Rescuers have finally managed to retrieve his body late on Saturday after removing much of the adjacent hillside and delicately tunneling a horizontal passage into the well. Ryan Aram, age 5, fell into the well at his village of Ikara in the hills near Chefchaouen on Tuesday, February 1st, triggering a huge rescue effort that engrossed the country. Ten bodies wrapped in blankets and tightly duct tape are found in Mexican street after a gang clash that left 16 dead amid a violent dispute on Saturday in Mexico's central state of Zacatecas following an apparent violent dispute between criminal gangs. Authorities has reported on February 5 as the state grapples with a spike in violence. State prosecutor Francisco Morelio said 10 bodies were found wrapped in blankets in the streets of the Fresnillo municipality while another six were suspended inside a warehouse in a nearby community, Fanfilona Terra. Authorities have already arrested two people who were caught transporting a separate corpse the day beforehand, with Morelio adding that the pair are now under investigation into the 16 other murders. None of the 16 bodies have been identified as of Saturday, but police described the victims as all males. Last month, authorities found the bodies of 10 people abandoned inside a vehicle in the historic center of the state capital, also named Zacatecas, a few steps from the government offices. A high-rate bridge in northeast Germany was detonated on Sunday morning, February the 6th, in an exceptionally exciting operation. It was described as especially exciting because the bridge is located in a bend and the upper parts consist of several parts. And it has worked that well, one of the witnesses has said after demolition. The controlled demolition had to be monitored closely to prevent damage to the new bridge, which was built alongside the old one and has recently been inaugurated. For safety reasons, the crowd of the curious bystanders had to maintain a distance of 300 meters or 984 feet. The area was temporarily sealed off and no traffic was allowed to cross the new bridge. On a Sunday morning, a small explosion went off to scare off the birds, a countdown was initiated and two minutes later, 120 kilograms of explosives were ignited. The bridge measuring 485.5 meters or 1,593 feet long and seven 7,236 feet high has collapsed clearly according to plan. Before the designation, higher parts of the bridge had been dismantled in order to better control the collapse. It was the first time ever a bridge of that height was detonated in Germany. U.S. troops arrived in Poland on Sunday, February 6, following a chain of command personnel as Washington is reinforcing its NATO allies in Eastern Europe amid a Russian military buildup on Ukraine's border. It was not immediately clear how many troops arrived, but a C-17 aircraft is designed to airdrop 102 paratroopers and their equipment. On Saturday, February 5, a small plane carrying the commanding general of the 82nd Airborne Division, U.S. Army Major General Christopher Donaway, has landed at Rajeshaw Jesse Anka Airport, following a few planes with the U.S. military equipment and an advanced group. Poland's Defense Minister Mariusz Blaszczak told media that the first group of American soldiers from an elite group and that more planes would be landing in the coming hours. On Wednesday, February 2nd, U.S. President Joe Biden has ordered nearly 3,000 extra troops to Poland and Romania as Washington moves to reassure jittery NATO allies. The Pentagon has said that around 1,700 service members, mainly from the 82nd Airborne Division, would deploy from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, to Poland. Russia has denied plans to invade Ukraine but has deployed more than 100,000 troops near Ukraine's border and says it could take unspecified military measures if its demands are not met including a promise by NATO never to admit Kyiv. Dutch-owned trawler F.V. Marjoris, the world's second biggest fishing vessel, shed over 100,000 dead fish into the Atlantic Ocean off France, forming a floating carpet of carcasses, which was spotted by environmental campaigners. The spill which happened in the early hours of Thursday, February 3rd, was caused by a rupture in the trawler's net, said the fishing industry group PFA, which represents the vessel's owner. In a statement, the group has called the spill a very rare occurrence. 
The French arm of campaign group Sea Shepherd first published images of the spill, showing the ocean surface covered by a dense layer of blue whiting, a subspecies of cod, which is used by the industry to mass-produce fish fingers, fish oil, and meal. Sea Shepherd France has said it doubted the incident was an accident. Lamia Isam Lali, head of the campaign group in France, her NGO was inclined to believe the fish were deliberately discharged. The EU regulation has been implemented so that the group can reduce the non-selective fishing methods because it's very demanding, time-consuming, and costs money for a fishing vessel to go back to port and unload the bycatch and then go back to the sea, Isam Lali has explained. The temptation is big for these vessels at sea without any witness, any control, to just throw overboard all the bycatch. French Maritime Minister Annick Geraldine has called the images of the dead fish shocking and said she had asked the country's National Fishing Surveillance Authority to launch an investigation into the accident. Trawlers like the Marjorie's use drag nets measuring over a kilometer in length and process the fish in onboard factories a practice heavily criticized by environmentalists. Sea Shepherd points to the practice as driving dolphins to salvation and forcing them to hunt closer to the coast, in turn leading the sea mammals to get trapped in fishing nets and dying of asphyxia. Thousands of dead dolphins have washed up on France Atlantic coast over the past years. Such high numbers of the mammals are affected that local populations are at risk, marine biologists say. Following protests by activists denouncing super trawlers, the Marjorie's was forced to leave Australian waters in 2012. Traffic data by marinetraffic.com on Friday showed the vessel, which is owned by the Dutch company Palafiat and Fanta Plus, and sails under the flag of Lithuania, was still engaged in fishing activities off the French coast. Well, you, you arrive on a, on a patch of fish and you just catch everything. This goes... Uh, against the the capacity of the of the population to uh, uh, to regain from the predation and it has an impact on the fish population itself but also it has an impact on the predators as dolphins because the fish that these uh, super trawlers are fishing are the prey the main prey of dolphins and sharks and basically we are driving dolphins to starvation there is total impunity at sea there is no control no witnesses and no fines uh, there's a lot of money to be made and we have to improve the controls at sea we have to put remote e monitoring cameras on board all the fishing vessels uh, they own us transparency because they are exploiting a natural habitat that we all depend on for our survival and the survival of the next generations. After the break, a look at all the latest sports news.
If it's happening and you need to know about it, you'll get it all right here. EAC News brings you updates and breaking news in English across all of our platforms and channels. The EAC News app, YouTube, Facebook, Telegram, Twitter, and our website, www.eacnews.asia. Join me and the rest of the EAC News team every day on your favorite channels. EAC News, Cambodia made clear. ហើយលោកអ្នកជិតរៀបអាពីពីពីមេនទេហើយពិបាករកក្រុមហ៊ុនថតវីដេអូផ្សាយផ្ទាល់ដែលមានគុណភាពមេនទេអស់កងវល់
A source at the International Olympic Committee confirmed Peng had met with President Thomas Bach for dinner on Saturday inside the Winter Olympic bubble in Beijing. The IOC will issue a statement on Peng later. A 30-year-old German man who is an IT professional has cracked an unusual record, hula hooping while in the abdominal plank position for 6.34 minutes. The hardest part is the plank. I hardly noticed a hula hoop, says Kai Sandmeyer, who established the record at Hengen. When he saw a video of the former record holder on Facebook, Sandmeyer decided to try the challenge and hopefully set a new Guinness World Record. While he was not taken seriously at first by his friends and family, Sandmeyer trained intensively before and after work every day to almost double the former record of 3.14 minutes. The biggest challenge for Sandmeyer, who comes from Lentersheim, a small town in south of Germany, was the bureaucracy linked to the record, namely a 36-page long rulebook. To make his performance count, Sandmeyer had to be filmed from several angles, had to have two witnesses present and perform at a public place, in this case the gym of a nearby school. In case he was not successful, Sandmeyer had given the record of hula hooping while doing push-ups a thought. Since there is no record yet, 10 push-ups would probably be enough. But actually, the bureaucratic effort is just too much for me, Sandmeyer added on Friday 4th of February. And now for a look at how the weather will be playing out tomorrow. And finally, set against the cold, dark Nordic winter in the Danish capital, artist Francois Goriad has said he hoped his work, Phoenix, would help make people think about traveling and flying and going around the world after two years of COVID restrictions. Phoenix is accompanied by audio of bird songs celebrating the nature that some humans still are destroying. Copenhagen Light Festival has just opened, with 50 installations making it the largest in Europe. Following the repeal of corona restrictions in Denmark, organizers hope to welcome more visitors than last year, when more than 500,000 people visited over a three-week period. One Danish artist has created a work from 5,000 pieces of yellow plastic found in nature. They were cleaned and assembled in a 3.6 meter tall globe-formed construction called A Dozen Sun by Maj D from Denmark. Many were clearly emotional after years with restrictions and visiting guest Peter Gard has expressed, it does something to your heart, it opens your mind, it makes a feeling inside of you of optimism because the winter and the last two years have been kind of closing and now we are opening up and this light is helping you. The majority of the light works are placed along the quay and on the bicycle bridges in the most biked city in the world. As a new element, many works will also be turned on in the early morning when people go to work. The beginning of February is the coldest day in Denmark and the Nordic countries with temperatures often below zero degrees Celsius. The Copenhagen Light Festival Sunday runs until February 27. Thank you for watching the Daily Roundup on EAC News Channel. For more breaking news and updates, you can check out our website eacnews.asia or search EAC News on Telegram or at your favorite app store. More from the EAC News team tomorrow night at 8 p.m. We will see you then.